Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In this video, we talk about the disconnected undercut hairstyle and how you get from this to this. The disconnected undercut is one of the most popular hairstyles today and it was popularized by shows like Boardwalk Empire or lately Peaky Blinders. The best part about it is that it can be styled in many different ways. Apart from that, it always makes a statement. It's a very classic style, but it can be modern at the same time. So what exactly is a disconnected undercut? Basically, it's defined as closely shaven sides with long hair on top and no or a minimal fade. In this case, I have enough for a side part and I have it in a very classic style that's more gentleman oriented from the 1920s and 30s. So before you can style it, you need to have the right cut. This is my hair when it's unstyled. Not quite what you expected, isn't it? So how do you explain this haircut to your barber? The best way to do it is to bring a picture of what you want ideally, and if he cannot recreate that, it's time to change your barber. In case a family member or a friend is cutting your hair, here is what you should do. First, you need a clipper and you should choose the number one attachment, which is the closest to getting a shave. I had my last haircut about two weeks ago, so my hair is a little longer, but usually with clipper number one, I get exactly the right length and it grows out nicely. Basically, you want a distinct line between the long hair on top and the short sides. So as you can see here, it has to be straight. In order to get that result, I need to have my long hair up so I can get the proper line. To do that, you can either use a clip or a hairband to just keep them up so you can make sure everything is straight. Once you're done with the sides, you want to cut the top of your hair to an even length. In my case, right now, it's about 9 centimeters or 3.5 inches. I would suggest not to go shorter than 7 centimeters or 2.75 inches because otherwise the distinction between the short sides and your top just is not as pronounced anymore and it's not a disconnected undercut. Personally, with my thick coarse hair, this is as long as I can go, otherwise I have trouble styling it. If you have finer hair or thinner hair, you can definitely go a lot longer and still get a nice undercut style. The advantage of this haircut is that it can be styled in many ways. You can create a vintage look or a 90s look or a rocker look and it really all depends on what products you use. The style was popular with close clipped sides in the 1910s, 20s, 30s and even the 40s. In the late 40s and 50s, you had this style with a so-called quiff top. Today's disconnected undercut is a combination of all of these styles and there's also a lot of different influences in there and you can basically do whatever you want. To learn more about the history, please check out our in-depth guide here. So how do you style this kind of a haircut? Well, the most classic way is to use pomade. Pomade is basically a wax, maybe some paraffin or glycerin, and it's very thick. And I used to do it when I started out with this hairstyle. The problem is some people get what is called pomade acne. So I ended up with lots of zits all over my forehead and it was a mess. On top of that, it greased up our pillow sheets and my wife complained constantly. That aside, even the strongest pomade wasn't strong enough for my hair and it was wavy. So overall, pomade was not a solution for me. To learn more about pomade, please check out our in-depth guide on our website here. If you have thinner hair, you may get away with a styling cream that provides a little bit of hold and you can shape it in any way, shape or form. For me, it just doesn't work because I have this coarse, thick hair. I've tested many hair products over the years and eventually I found this one, which really worked for me, which is the Got To Be from Schwarzkopf. Now, I've been using it for the last three years and I haven't tested anything else really. So if you know of a very strong glue, let me know in the comments. You also need a comb. Most people buy relatively inexpensive combs for a dollar or less that are made of injection molded plastic. And the problem is they have little ridges and it actually can hurt your hair. It's also much more difficult to get the comb through your hair. That's why I'm using a quality hard rubber comb, which is also better than acetate because it glides through your hair like butter and it doesn't damage your hair. So invest a few more bucks in a quality comb. Moreover, you need a hair dryer. In this case, I'm just using a regular store brand, nothing fancy. It just has to get hot if you want to dry your hair quickly and you need 
a certain amount of power, not too much, so it actually dries. I always start with freshly washed hair because just making it wet is not enough, at least in my case, it's too thick and it's much more difficult to style it right. At the same time, you don't want your hair to be too wet, otherwise it takes too long and you may get waves in your hair. Once I wash my hair, I make sure to dry it thoroughly. You can also use a second towel if it's not dry enough. Now it's time for some gel. Like I said, you want the stuff that is white. I'll take about this much for the amount of hair I have. Don't skimp on it because if you don't use enough, you lack the hold, especially if you have thick coarse hair. Now I rub it in both hands and apply it to my hair. Usually I start with one first and just get it in there all the way down, not just on top. I'm gonna make sure the second layer is really in there. You definitely wanna get all of your long hair. They really need to absorb it. All right, now it's time to wash your hands, otherwise everything will be sticky and it'll be a mess. Now it's time to choose your part. Personally, I like it either here or here. Usually I don't go all the way to the sides. It's only something you may wanna do if you have a receding hairline and you still have hair here so you can kind of comb it over. I avoid center parts because it makes me look like from the Adams family. An easy way to get your part right is to comb it back on the side you want the part to be and then simply go in straight and go up. Now you simply comb it to one side and then to the other so you get a nice part. At this stage your part is not perfect and you simply do it from the other way. Sometimes it's great the first time, but usually when you start out, it's not. Now I go slightly to the side, not in the exact line, otherwise it will never be straight, but just a tiny amount to the left or right, and it'll be a much smoother, straighter line. Once I'm at the end, I hold my hair like this so I know what side it's on, and I comb the other part over, so I just get exactly what I want. Once I'm done with the part, you have this result. Next up, I comb my hair down into the side in the back, exactly where I want it to be. At this stage, it's time for the hair dryer. Normally, I choose the warm setting, which is not too hot, but also not cool, because that way it dries faster. And I use the medium setting, because otherwise, it will just blow my hair all over the place, and it's harder to style it. First, I start with the shorter side, because it's easier. Basically, I dry my hair and follow with a comb so I get nice straight hairlines and I get it to settle in the place I want it to. Now you can see it's much closer to the head. Now the short side is much easier than the wider side because you have a lot more hair. There are basically two ways to do this. You can comb and use your fan and do one strand all the way at a time or you go along the part first and slightly move over in lines until you're all the way to the end of your head. You can choose whatever works for you for me, with my coarse and thick hair, it's better to move slowly from the part away. At this stage, I also sometimes use the hot setting simply to get it to dry faster. Once you have your hair in the shape you roughly want it to be, it's time to use your hands and leave the comb behind. I do this because otherwise I'll get hair sticking out, especially in the back, and I want to avoid that. With my hands, I can hold my hair down while using the hair dryer and smooth it all out. If you get hair standing up, simply use some water, make it wet, put it back on, maybe use a little bit of gel, and use your hair dryer again. Once you're happy with the look and your hair is flat, you're basically done. Voila! The disconnected undercut, gentleman's gazette style. They also have a black version of it that is clear and it doesn't work at all. So stay clear of that, only use that one. A regular gel doesn't work because it flakes. I really need something that's super strong. Before you decide to go with this haircut, you should think about what exactly do you want? How long do you want it on top? Do you want it really short on the side? Do you want a slight fade or not? And how are you gonna wear it? What are you gonna wear it with? Now that you know what my unstyled hair and my hairstyle looks like and how I do it, stay tuned for the next video and sign up for our newsletter so you get the next video right to your inbox. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.